according to Professor Njabula and Bele, there can be no transformation of the curriculum in, and indeed of knowledge itself without any interrogation of the archive. Your recent exhibition, Slantways, draws attention to these issues of value and visibility and even relevance in relation to your study of this particular object collection of the UCT's Manuscript and Archives Department. You've used a number of creative practices in your work that have enabled you to approach the archive in new ways. What makes it into an archive, what's written about it, and even by default what's left out of the archive, underpins the archive really as a site of value in the need of questioning and troubling. I'm thinking in particular of Hoard, which speaks to issues of value in relation to archival practice and archival collections. Well, the thing that struck me when I first encountered this object collection um, was that although obviously at one stage and when it was collected, it was these objects were considered valuable um, and had actually been collected um, for the benefit of future scholars, um, by the time I got to it, its value was far more questionable. Um, and although it was dutifully conserved, I think the colonial taint of the objects and the fact that history had completely overtaken them meant that nobody paid them much attention. So um, I decided to try to expose this contradiction of using two different strategies. The first strategy was to do with the materials I used to make hoard. Although it's displayed um, on very sumptuous silk velvet um, so that it looks as if it's very precious, in actual fact it's made out of a very cheap accessible material, modeling clay, which is usually used by children, and uh, sprayed gold. So that was the first strategy. Then the second strategy was um, I added in certain artifacts from two other collections into, into Horde um, to augment it. Firstly, I used a few uh, artifacts from the Mapungubwe collection based at the University of Pretoria. Um, and then uh, actually these objects um, are indisputably extremely valuable. They, firstly, they're made of, of real gold, and secondly, they are of great significance in telling us about South Africa's history. Um, and then the last collection I selected a few objects from were, was my own personal archive, and um, in contrast, these artifacts, uh, such as my mother's earring, a few old bits and pieces, um, are not valuable to anybody except to me. A second um, and extremely important issue that you confront with this exhibition relates to a far more personal experience, um, however an experience that I think speaks to significant challenges for all educational institutions and the individual lives that they reach. In this exhibition, um, you share with your viewers how you suffered a severe sight loss um, six months into your PhD. This altered many things for you, um, your relationship to the actual archival objects, your approach to the visual and art making, you raise questions of the materiality of the artwork, but also address issues of accessibility. Well, um, an important artwork in this regard is one that I called um, Finding Aid, the Archive Partially Seen. Um, and it takes the form of a, of a body map, a kind of outline of my body, um, and juxtaposed with outlines of all the objects and um, assistive devices that I use to be able to access the archive and, and just generally use in my research and in my daily life, such as a, a big keyboard, uh, magnifying glasses and so on. Um, so that work is important. But then secondly, I, I, I tried to use a multi-sensorial approach in these works. So for instance, there's a smell piece, there's a sound piece. Um, all this, all, I, I try to, to focus on the senses which are usually less privileged because we usually automatically privilege the visual. Um, and uh, 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 perhaps an interesting one of these works um, 
is a work in which I translated um, an eight, the text on an 18th century puzzle piece. Um, the phrase is the troublesome companion and I translated it into Braille and represented this phrase using 67 uh, pom-poms. Referring to you know, your intention of your research, um, which you framed as a case study in reconfiguring a South African institutional object collection, I'd like to maybe consider how your creative engagement um, in this particular um, exhibition acted as a valid process of conceptual inquiry and meaning making. You know, through your artworks, you've enacted new and really reimagined dialogues with colonial pasts, um, forgotten histories of this collection of neglected objects in ways that maybe differ from standard academic studies. Even in your catalogue, you refer to your creative work as allowing these archival objects to make sense and speak for themselves in a way that would resonate with a contemporary audience. Art, art may, it speaks its own language, a, a very different language to that which one uses in, in conventional academic research. Even if you do use text in art, I think it, it's more open-ended, it, it allows for more que different questions to be asked in different ways um, that don't necessarily have easy answers. Another work um, that's interesting in this regard maybe um, took the form of a translation. In the archive there's a recording of the speech that the then Queen of England made in 1947 when UCT granted her an honorary uh, doctorate. And so in my artwork I trans had this speech translated into Saswati and performed in Saswati. Um, to try and imagine uh, an alternative history and probably even more importantly how we would feel today if history had been different. 